Welcome back to a breezy Lubbock, Texas. 53 degrees right now. The wind blowing at 31 miles per hour. But they tell us we should experience wind gusts as high as 40 to 50 miles per hour throughout this game. Gary Patterson, his 12th ranked Horn Frog. And you take a look at Gary Patterson. This is a guy, 17 seasons at TCU. Horn Frog's all-time winning his football coach with 157 wins. And Cliff Kingsbury, fifth season as head coach of the Red Raiders. He's the only former Texas Tech player to return to his alma mater as a head coach. By the way, two and two against the Horn Frogs as a head coach. Horn Frogs won the toss. They've opted to defer, so the Red Raiders will get it first, and that means Kiki QT back deep to receive it. And you want to talk about a dangerous return, man. Last weekend, he opened the game with a 92-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. All right, let's talk about what to watch for, Ben, with the Red Raiders. Well, you just mentioned him, Kiki QT. The guy can do everything. He catches touchdowns, receiving, rushing, throwing, and even on all the return games. So you have to watch out for him on offense. And then defensively, he's one of the best defenses in the country and led by a lot of guys. But I like Nick Orr. He's going to have to make plays in space along with the other DBs against this offensive scheme that likes to throw things horizontally. So a lot of opportunities for open field tackling. You know the Red Raiders with that spread offense love to play with pace. That's QT in motion. Justin Stockton gets the first carry. Stockton, good pickup of six yards. And once again, Shimnick, that Red Raider offense playing with pace. Play fake. That pass is caught. Dylan Cantrell. Now this is exactly how the offense wants to set up. They want to get the run game going, and they want some easy passes for Shimanek. Once he gets into rhythm, he's a dangerous passer. He just needs a little bit more consistency in the second half. Stockton, the carry. That's a good pickup of three or four. You know, this is the one thing that I, wor I worry about with TCU's defense and their team overall. A tough loss last week, and they're coming off and having to play an 11 o'clock kick. So emotionally, how are they going to respond? Their defense needs to step up, start fast, and sort of set that tempo for their offense. Red Raiders coming up for victory last weekend, which ended a four-game losing streak they had. TCU coming off that loss to Oklahoma. Shimanek. That one's complete to Cameron Batson. And you notice sometimes they'll, they'll mess, both teams are going to mess with tempo. They really throw off a defense because they'll get lined up, look to the sideline, get a play, and then snap the ball. And sometimes they'll go right up to the line and snap it. Third and three. See, there it is. They get lined up, they're going to check the defense. And then Cliff Kingsbury, the head coach and offensive player, is going to feed in the offensive play call. Red Raiders, fourth in the conference and converting third down. That was tipped in the air, nearly picked off, but we got a flag. We're going to get Izahaku, number 31, the safety that came down in the slot that's going to come early to make contact with the receiver. Pass interference by number 31 of the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. But this is an area that both offense is going to have to beat man-to-man -man defense. TCU very aggressive. They show blitzes from a lot of different angles. They blitz off the right side that time, play man coverage behind it. And the junior is a Haku comes in just a touch early and gives Texas Tech a first down. 73rd flag on TCU this season. That's the fourth most. In the Big 12, Trey King has checked in in the backfield. He gets the carry. King over that right side. Rico Evans with the tackle. We talked about how shorthanded TCU is coming into this game. And I'm talking about six 
major starters here, Ben, that are out here. Well, yeah, you take a look at that. Obviously, quarterback, that hurts you. You have no idea what you need to get out of the young freshman quarterback. And really, I think Jonathan Song, the kicker, that might be the biggest blow for this team because in the games that he's missed, they have missed eight field goals. And we all know that this game, this series, comes down to a few points here and there. And you factor in that win today, too. That's complete to T.J. Basher. Basher about a couple yards short of the first down. You know, we're going to have to watch as this game goes on how TCU defensively missing Traven Howard responds to set up the defense. He is their defensive leader and the smartest player on that team to get everybody lined up. He's, he's one of those guys that's out. So there's going to be a new play caller on defense. How well can he get them set up with this up-tempo style? Trey King got that first down. Red Raiders now in TCU territory. Justin Stockton has checked back in in the backfield. Shimanek lines up his troops. Play fake. Quick strike. Dylan Cantrell. I really like what Texas Tech is doing already. They've had a little bit of success in the run game, so all of a sudden now already on the first series, it opens up a little bit of that play-action pass. It's a quick little ride to the belly of the running back, pulls it out, and gets it out to his receiver. They go with trips at the top of your screen. Carry goes to Stockton. We're looking at third down again for the Red Raiders. Warren Frogs defense, best in the conference, stopping their opponents on third down. Stockton gets the carry. He powers his way for another first down. So Red Raiders again, converting on third down, two for two. Well, take a look. You'll see 41, Tyler Carr going back across the formation after the snap. We were told yesterday in the meetings they expect a lot more pullers in this sort of game because they think they found some vulnerability to this TCU defense. So offensive line, tight ends in the backfield, a lot of action after the snap going across the formation. Batson swings it out to him, left side. He's out of bounds at the 23. Rico Evans pushes him out. You know, this is the one thing that is different about this Texas Tech offense this year compared to last year is you notice the tempo between the plays. That sort of stays the same, but they're actually more patient offensively. They're okay grinding out games and giving their defense a rest, so they're always looking for the deep shot. Stockton, the carry. And he is met by a group of horned frogs and may have lost one. Ross Blacklock. The first one to hit him. Well, check out this defense for TCU finally getting a little bit of penetration up front. And you mentioned Blacklock. He's a redshirt freshman. They really went after some big bodies in the recruiting the last couple of years because they, they predicate themselves off of fast defensive backs and linebackers, but they still need some girth up front. And at 325 pounds, he's a big one. They call their up front guys the killer bees. For TCU. We're going to have a timeout by the Red Raiders. Third and five. Nick Shimanek and the Red Raiders looking at when we come back. Eidsters. In the first quarter, TCU, Texas Tech, Red Raiders with the football first so far. This play, this drive has gone 12 plays. 51 yards, they're looking at third and five now from the Horn Frog 24-yard line. Well, this would be a good time for QT. He's their best playmaker in offense, and this is a play they need to have here in the red zone. There's number two, Kiki QT. Mr. Do-it-all for this offense. Let's see if they can get him the ball here on third and five. They send Stockton in motion. Trips up top. And there's a quick strike, and it's complete to QT. Well, 
because some of those quick strikes are so hard to defend. You'll see QT right there just sit right down in the zone. It was a good ball placement by Shimnik is really what was the difference because there was an inside defender right there on his right side. He puts it on the outside where only QT can go and get it. Stockton and Trey King split in the backfield. Play fake, the slant. Cantrell. We've gotten to that point in the red zone where the Red Raiders love to look to number nine, TJ Basher. He's 6'6. So he's got a seven foot wingspan. A seven one wingspan. That, that one inch you know, could make a difference in a situation like this in the red zone, but great young player, very tall, obviously a lot of range with his, uh, his catch radius. Red Raiders, worst in the conference when it comes to red zone offense. That's Stockton with the carry. Well, and we all know that watching a lot of football, that it gets really hard because the defense gets compressed. You see the safeties can now play down in the box a lot more, so the run game gets a little harder, the river run gets a little harder, and then you have to be pinpoint accurate on a lot of passes. That's why it's so hard in the red zone to score touchdowns. Another third down, third and three here for Texas Tech. They have chewed up a lot of time here in the first quarter with this drive. The read option is Shimonek, keeps it. And he's close. He looks like he's going to be just short of the first down. He's a hot crew with the stop. He's something we don't see very often. A not, a, a not real mobile Nick Shimonek. Keeping the ball right there. Here we go, fourth and one. They're going to go sneak. for it. Yeah, they're going to go for it. Timeout by Texas Tech again. So Cliff Kingsbury wants to talk it over again. Fourth and one is what they're looking at from the nine. Thanks for the ride along, Captain. I've never been in one of them. A win today, a win next weekend against Baylor. They clinch a spot in the Big 12 championship game. This is fourth and one. From the nine, TCU, best defense in the Big 12. I'd imagine a big boy quarterback just plow ahead on a quarterback sneak. Shimonek is going to keep it. And he falls forward for a first down. We're going to try a little deception with the motion, but it's the right call with the right player in that situation. You didn't have very far to go. Just a few inches to pick up that first down. Good push on the offensive line up front. So far, this drive, offensive line has played fantastic. We've gotten some chunk yardage runs against a very formidable and tough defense in TCU. Desmond Nisby has checked in for the first time in the backfield from the pistol. This is Nisby. He's a big guy. Trying to power his way. He gets to the, about the five-yard the five line, stood up by that Horn Frog defense. Oh, they're going to keep Nisby in there, and I think that's a smart thing to do. He already has seven rushing touchdowns this year, so you know as a defense, they like to get the ball in this guy's hands. Sometimes, even though it's an obvious thing, he's a big back that can run you over. Nisby, Stockton, split backfield. Play fake. He looks too high. Intended for a game trail. Well, linebacker Sammy Douglas and Nick Orr were standing right. Watch the left side of your screen. They drop back in coverage. Close off any sort of slant windows. And that was a smart thing to do by Shimnek just to sail that ball, get that ball out of the end zone. First incompletion for Shimnek. Stopped it in the backfield. Third and goal. Look at this line of defense. It's going to be awfully hard to run anything short and inside. 19 plays this drive. Shimonek under pressure. And he's going to throw almost picked off in the end zone by Nick Orr. Well, like I said, and you mentioned it earlier, Texas Tech has struggled in the red zone all season long. 
You see Joseph Brodnax applying the pressure. Shimnek trying to buy some time and find somebody open. And nearly picked off and nearly disastrous after a really nice drive for Texas Tech. They've had some kicking issues. It looks like right now, we mentioned the wind. It's swirling inside the stadium. Right now, the wind is at his back. There should be a chip shot, easy one for Hatfield. Clayton Hatfield, this is from 23 yards out. It's good. Red Raiders on the board first. Three nothing to score here in the first quarter. Let's get a quick game break. Greg Wolf in Los Angeles. All right, Brian, thanks. Number three, Miami jumped into the college football playoff top four after that beat down in Notre Dame last week, taking on Virginia, and it's the Cavaliers who strike first. Kurt Van Kurt to Olamide Zacchaeus, 33-yard score. Cavaliers lead 7-0 early, but that turnover chain already in effect. Haynes with a fumble recovery and on the move. Brian, Ben, back to you. All right, Greg. Turn up a chain. Turn up a chain. Turn up a chain. I love that song. You know, I, I love that song. I didn't know what to think about it when the season started, right. and I, I'm really into it. It, yeah, it, is, it, it is a, cool, it. It's a cool deal. <laughs> well, there's one of the most dangerous men in the country. Back deep waiting for this kick. Big play, Cavante Turpin. Yeah, you got to watch out for him. We talked man. about QT on the other side, but, man, the return game is going to be fun and electric. It should be fun this whole game. Michael Barton kick things away. Here is Jalen Rager. Across the 30. Still moving. Across the 35. Brought down at the 37. Let's talk about what to watch for when the Horned Frogs have the rock. Well, you mentioned... Cavante Turpin, he is one of the best and most dynamic and explosive players in the whole country. You're going to see him on offense and special teams. A lot of times getting the ball in his hands on jet sweeps and whatnot. Safeties for Texas Tech's defense. This is a much improved Texas Tech defense. These guys fly around and hit. These, they're undersized. If Texas Christian wants to get involved in the run game, these guys need to come downhill and run the alleys and hit and finish, which they've been doing all season long. Well, third year under the system of David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator for the Red Raiders, and maybe it is a good thing to keep them off the field. That's what the offense did. We got some trickeration here by the Red, by the Horn Frogs. Turpin with the reverse, and he's pushed out of bounds. So Sean Robinson, the true freshman, getting his first start. In fact, it is the first time a true freshman has started for TCU since 1999. Casey Printers did it back then against Arkansas State. Well, we asked the coaches about him, just how he's going to approach the games. And he's played on a big stage in a big 6A class in Texas. 40,000 people at championship games and playoff games. So it's, the stage isn't too big for him. He has those intangibles that they think is going to make him a great player. Here's Kyle Hicks. Gets that carry. Picks up a couple. Horn Frogs will be looking at third down. Roger Washington with the stop. And we're going to see a lot more of Kyle Hicks and Shea Wu along Loa. The two running backs for TCU because we mentioned off the top of this show, Darius Anderson, who has eight touchdowns for this offense, is out and is out for the rest of the season. Horn Frogs, best team in the Big 12 in converting third downs. Texas Tech defense, the worst in the Big 12 in stopping opponents on third down. This is third and five. They're going to run with the quarterback. Robinson gets himself a first down. Colin Hill with the stop. You see the defensive coordinator there, David Gibbs, his third season. Texas Tech. You know, we asked him yesterday just, you know, why the, why the drastic improvement in defense, especially the run defense. He's like, listen, we're not doing anything uh, anything different. We're teaching the same things. We've got some more players, some bigger guys up front. But these guys have really bought in in the offseason. It's showing. He said, we'll be a really good, he thinks, next season. Robinson keeps it stiff off over the left side. This is the dynamic he brings to the offense that Kenny Hill doesn't. His feet. That's another first down. Boy, just take a look at just his body, how big he is. He, keep in mind, this is a true freshman. 
This young man was just in high school last December before he early enrolled at Texas Christian. And he's a big body guy that's going to give stiff arms, 6'3", about 6'3", 225 pounds. And he will look to run people over. He's not going to avoid contact. If he sees a linebacker a strong safety, he's going to stick his hat down and run them over. And you mentioned it. Won a state championship in December at DeSoto High School there. It's a long time coming for DeSoto. In 6A, you didn't get any bigger or more competition than that. Hicks gets it, flags blown. He cuts back. Texas Tech signaling that's going to be a penalty on TCU. Personal foul, a shot block by number 64 and number 51. The offense. It's a 15 yard penalty, and it's still first down. 64 has Matt Pryor. It's going to be Pryor and Schlotman, the, the center. Playing a little bit of out of position. We'll take a look at Robinson again. Four-star recruit, highly recruited. And they said the most important thing that he did was the early enrollment in January. They really feel like he's more like a redshirt freshman than not a true freshman because he was there with the guys all of the offseason, learn the offense. The coaches are learning what he can and can't do. So Sonny Cumbie, offensive coordinator, has done a fantastic job. Two seconds on the play clock. Robinson keeps it. Here goes Robinson. The freshman. Finally brought down at the six-yard line by Deshaun Johnson. Well, this is how you get a young quarterback in rhythm. Not so much a short passing game, but get his legs moving. Simple little zone read. He reads the right defensive end collapsing down, so he keeps the ball, goes around the left side. Huge gain and a lot of confidence brewing for this young quarterback. 41-yard scamper for Robinson. He's already run for 66 yards. Gives this one to Hicks. He's brought down at the five-yard line. So now this is a big check for Texas Tech's defense. Talked about how it's improved. Red zone defense needs to step up. They're on their heels right now. Not sure if the quarterback's going to keep it. Hand it off. They need to step up right here on defense. Fifth best defense in the conference. Talk about the red zone. This is Robinson. He'll keep it. Dives forward. It'll be third down for TCU. Well, it looks like he just lost his footing. A speed option to the left. He decided immediately to keep the ball. And it looked like he just tripped over his own feet. That turf monster, you don't you get your head down, man. You know, you watch out for him. Hey, he's a He'll freshman. Come up and grab him. <laughs> he's a freshman. He may have some heavy, heavy legs after that long run. Yeah, you're right about that. Third and goal now for the Moored Frogs. You see him taking a few deep breaths. He looks a little tired right now on his opening drive. And he's going to throw the back shoulder fade, and we've got a flag. It was intended for John DeArce. Marcus Fields with the coverage. You know, there's nothing you can do about that as a defensive player. Pass interference by number 23 of the defense. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line, and it's first down. You know, the young redshirt freshman is getting picked on a little bit lately. A little bit out of position, probably more of a safety, but the ball's uh, not intended to be a back shoulder throw. Both players have to adjust, and he just unfortunately gets his right arm caught up on the receiver. Horn Frogs trying to score an opening touchdown, especially an opening drive touchdown on the roads. September 9th, last time they've done it. The Red Raiders aren't trying to make it happen. They just stuff Hicks. Sean Johnson, the first man to wrap him up. Yeah, I mentioned how important these safeties are in this ball game, and again, you get in the red zone, and they can creep up to the line of scrimmage much more. They're fast, reactive, physical players, so you have to count for them in the run box. Sometimes you just don't have enough blockers up front to get the safeties, and Jay Sean Johnson, along with the big defensive front, comes up with a nice little first down stop on the goal line. Sean Robinson lines up. They go wildcat here. 
Jaywo Alanalua got the direct snap and fumbled it, but got it back. Well, that's the danger sometimes of going wildcat. You're putting a player that's not used to being back there to take the direct snap, and I know that he's been doing it really his whole career, but sometimes when you're just looking at the wrong thing and not expecting it, you take your eye off the ball for one split second, and Alana Lua puts this offense with that fumble in a predicament situation on third down. And it looks like that's going to be the last play here this first quarter. Thanks to that Red Raider opening drive that accounted for nearly nine minutes. It's the Red Raiders. Up three to nothing at the end of the first quarter. We come back second quarter. Texas Tech, TCU. Black Friday savings start early at Ace. Save up to 50% on great gifts. And up to 50% on Christmas lights. Plus get great savings on hundreds of items. First quarter in the books here in Lubbock. Red Raiders with a three to nothing lead. TCU with just two yards passing. In that first quarter, they did it all behind the legs of Sean Robinson, their freshman quarterback. But how about Texas Tech? More rush yards than passing yards. Well, I'm just I'm surprised that they were able to, to, to garner that huge drive, the opening drive for their offense, really chew up a lot of clock. And now, you know, after that long run for TCU, they've really sort of batted down the hatches, played good defense. Obviously, the, the fumble in the Wildcat in the last play didn't help out TCU's offense, but Texas Tech's defense is stepping up. TCU not had any opening drive points on the road since September 23rd when they played Oklahoma State. Robinson, misdirection to Jalen. Levante Turpin, and Turpin gets into the end zone for the Horn Frogs. Well, we knew it was a matter of time. They tried Turpin on the very first play of the game on sort of a, a double reverse that didn't really go anywhere. Didn't see much of him the rest of the, the rest of the drive, but when they need a play, get the ball in your biggest playmaker and one of the best playmakers in the country, and they do it on the left side of the perimeter, and nobody could catch him for Texas Tech's defense. Cole bounce. Munch will kick the extra point, and it is good. Devontae Turpin. Been player in the last 10 years with a touchdown, passing, running, receiving, punt return, kick. Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. Last home game here in Lubbock, and it's senior day. Nick Jimenez and his parents recognized as well as 16 other seniors. Ten of them spent their entire careers at Texas Tech. Look at... Turpin, who got the touchdown run. Big receive for the Red Raiders, number two, Kiki Kiki. Seven to three. The score, you see that wind blowing the ball off there. Cole Bunce kick things away. Wind blowing at 31 miles per hour right now, but they say we will experience wind gusts from 40 to 50 at points throughout this game. Justice Parker dropped it, picked it back up at the five. He's brought down at the 10-yard line. When do we come back, another look at Nick Shimonet in his Red Raider offense. They're down seven to three at TCU. I want to know who has the, the original trophy. They mysteriously disappeared. They said they, it was like yeah, someone had it in someone's garage somewhere. But they'll be playing for it today and in the, the near future here going forward. Here's a handoff. Busting loose is Stockton. Markel Simmons with the stop. But that's another first down by Texas Tech. And again, they're going where with, with some pace. They did a great job the last one. They a long drive, kept their defense off the field. This is first and ten now. 
from their own 23. Empty set for Shimanek. Another quick strike. You know, the one thing I liked about that, that zone read on that first play was Shemenek was so decisive on what he wanted to do. And the same thing with Justin Stockton and running the ball. They were in sync and they hand the ball immediately and it really caught the defense off guard. The defensive end on the, on the outside didn't know who to take. And the next thing that he knew, Stockton was right past him. So nice execution on the first play. QT in motion. Lines up in the slot. Stockton, running hard, brought down at the 30-yard line. You know, so much of this offense and a lot of these offenses that run the spread scheme is they're counting numbers on defense. And when the defense presents itself with a three-man front, which Texas or TCU's been doing all game long, that tells the offense that we need to run the ball. We have the numbers in the blocking scheme to run in the middle. That's why Texas... Texas Tech right now is running up inside because of what the defense is presenting. Third and three here for the Red Raiders. So far, they're three of five on third down. Second on the play clock. Gets it off just in time. Shimanek looking to the right, and he's going deep. And he overthrows T.J. Basher. Well, we talked about Vasher early on, just his big size and big frame. He's a 6'6 target, and they have a lot of high expectations for this young man, but where he has to get a little bit better, and I think they need to use him a little bit better with his size, is he doesn't have great breakaway speed vertically. It's pretty easy for the old savvy vet and Ranthony Tejada on the outside to keep up with him foot for foot and stride for stride. So, got to utilize his big speed better than that. Dominic Penazzolo, the punter. Rugby style, punts it away. Gets a good roll and rolls out of bounds. At the 18-yard line. 7-3, to three, your score, 53-yard punt. The NFL on Fox begins Sunday at 1 Eastern. Check your local listings. 7-3 the score here in Lubbock. Time now for a game break. Here's Greg Wolf. Brian, thanks. A game you can see over on Fox, number five, Wisconsin on the outside looking into that college football playoff facing Michigan. I think the Wolverines didn't think Nick Nelson was going to do anything with his punt. Look what he does, though. Picks it up, but he goes 50 yards for the touchdown. Badgers lead 7-0 second quarter. Brian, Ben, back to you. All right, Greg, thank you. As we take a look at the standings there in the Big Ten for Wisconsin, look, they've already clinched a spot in that Big Ten championship game. If they can win out. You can see themselves in that college football playoffs. Michigan, they've got a big one against Ohio State next weekend. You can see that one on Fox. Hicks got the carry there and nothing doing. Just as Parker and the boys right there. I don't even think he got back in the line of scrimmage. No, he didn't. And these guys up front for Texas Tech's defense are really getting after it. They do a really good job of slanting their defensive line, getting the penetration that's needed to get those TFLs. And just as Parker, the nickel comes up for a big stop. And one thing uh, you can say about this Texas Tech defense, especially when it comes to takeaways, best in the conference at takeaways. They've got 22 on the season. Robinson, play fake, rolls, flushed. And he's going to throw. Nearly intercepted. Octavius Morgan almost came up with the pick. Oh, and then Morgan basically overran this ball, and I wonder if the wind had anything to do with it. He misjudges it, a two-man switch route on the outside, and he reads it perfectly, but just overruns it. Slow your body down, slow your mind down, and that could have been an interception for Texas Tech's defense and could have been a huge turning point in this game. Flag. Delay of game by number 12 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty 
and it's still third down. Well, you can see Gary Patterson telling his offense coordinator, let's call the timeout, get these guys lined up. Well, Why not call a timeout? And I, and I wonder if he was looking at the official saying he was trying to call a timeout, knowing that the play clock was winding down, and you can see just sort of the slow reaction and, and response from his quarterback after that bad pass, just not getting back in rhythm. He's got to let those plays go. Sonny Cumbie, offensive coordinator for TCU, former quarterback at Texas Tech. Here's Robinson, under pressure, third and 16. Nearly tackled in the end zone. He throws it away. Jordy Brooks, Jordan Brooks there, applying the pressure. Well, I like the adjustment that Texas Tech did on defense. The play before on the delay game, they showed a blitz. This time they reset, they show the same blitz, they back out, causes a lot of confusion on the underneath coverage for Robinson has no place to go. He's gonna quickly realize that the speed in college football is much different and I don't care where you're at, major college or major high school football in Texas, the speed is different and Jordan Brooks just about got to him in the end zone. Adam Nunez, punting things away. This is Cameron Batson lets it roll, and it turns out to be a good punt for TCU. Down at the 26-yard line. TCU up 7-3. This is your wake-up call. Of Maryland, they take on 17th ranked Michigan State and Sparty. We'll see Sparty next weekend, Ben. That game comes at 4 Eastern, followed by Cal and Stanford. The big game at 8 Eastern. It's all on Fox and FS1, or you can stream it live on Fox Sports Go. Final home game here in Lubbock. Senior day for the Red Raiders. First and 10. Jimenez. Play fake. He's looking right in the area of Kiki QT. We got a flag down. Wow, he makes an unbelievable catch. The flag may be defensive pass interference. Flag on the play. But my goodness, what a one-handed catch from QT. Take a look at the catch here. Here's the Steps push. out of bounds. And you'll see... What an unbelievable concentration from QT. We knew that he's going to have to get the ball some way, somehow. Pass interference by number three of the defense. Penalty is declined. This first down. Markel Simmons. 30 yards on that play. And there's no reason to worry of him stepping out of bounds. He was forced out and reestablished himself in bounds. Gonna take another look at it. Shimek started this game at seven for seven. Since then, has gone one for four before that completion. Well, you, you knew at some point in time they're gonna try to throw the ball down the field, and that's really how a lot of these spread offenses are are set up. And we'll bring in Mike Pereira to take another look at this play here. Mike, what do you think? Well, here's what I do think. I think the right foot is out of bounds, but the left foot does not get down inbounds first before he touches the ball, so he hasn't reestablished. So then that makes it essentially an incomplete pass. Now, they ruled it complete, declined the interference. So now, if they rule this as not reestablishing, they can go back and make it an incomplete pass. They can go back and put the pass interference back on, which would be a 15-yard penalty. And I think that's probably what they'll do. Okay, so regardless, it looks like then Texas Tech will get a first down and at least will move forward. All right, a lot, a lot to take in there. And you saw on the replay as Mike was talking, and he's right, he did not on the replay get both feet reestablished in bounds. Or at least that left catch. foot, at least that left foot reestablished, yeah. Take another look at this watch when he gets pushed down. See the right foot's there. So left both foot there. end up going out of bounds. And he makes the catch and then left foot's yeah. Mike, when you take another look at that, when you, you have to reestablish yourself, how many feet? Just one foot or you have to put both feet back in? Yeah. 
You just need the one foot. You just need the one foot down. In the NFL, it's always two feet. Everything is two feet. But in college football, it's a one foot. So if he gets that one foot down, he's considered to reestablish. He get blocked out a little bit on the shot, but I think there's enough there to show that the foot didn't get down before he first touched it. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Well, there it is. You can see he makes the catch before. Watch the left foot. And it's in just a fraction of a second. That's close. Let's see. Let's see. After further review, the receiver was out of bounds when he touched the ball. Therefore, the pass is incomplete. We will now enforce the defensive pass interference against number three. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Mike, you and Dean, you're the best. Best in the business. Well, right. there you go. First down anyway. Yeah. So TCU now, that's four penalties, 40 yards. Against the Horned Frogs. So the Red Raiders will have first down from their own 42. trips at the bottom of your screen. This is Stockton with the carry. Picked up all couple. Rico Evans makes the stop. You know, go back to the earlier point about this offense is they can hit you deep. They just need to set some things up on the outside. And we saw QT ruled incomplete, but that's the sort of plays you need to get down the field against this defense. Roll you to sleep, short underneath passing game, and then bam, hit you over the top. Stockton again. He barely got back to the line. Rico Evans is a busy man in defense. Well, like I said, with that three-man front for TCU, it's very inviting as the offensive coordinator and play caller to want to run the ball in the middle. A lot more success early part in this game, but TCU's defensive line and linebackers have really stepped up since then. They understand what the offense is trying to do, and now they're winning at the point of attack with their big guys up front and stopping any sort, any sort of internal run game for Texas Tech. Third and seven. Shimonet over the middle. Broken up. He's looking for Dylan Cottrell. That one was almost picked off. Well, it's a second pass breakup for Ridwan Izahaku. Number 31, the safety, drives on this dig route. And nearly intercept. You see Shimanek, anytime there's simultaneous contact like that, he's obviously looking for a pass interference call. But I think that was a good no call by the officials and a nice play by Izahaku. Benazolo with the punt. out of bounds at the 10. Well, when we come back, the TCU running game led by Hick and Busters. 7-3, to three, our score here in the second quarter. TCU and Texas Tech. Boy, we thought we'd have us a Texas-sized shootout at this point. I know. It seems like every game that these two play, it is a shootout. Back and forth tennis match of just scoring points left and right, but a defensive game here for both teams and this young quarterback and Sean Robinson he's got his hands full did not look good on that last series forced to throw the ball I expect him to run the ball a little bit more especially on first down the read option Robinson keeps it pick up from about four Juan Johnson stop well like I said they need to do a better job on first down to give Sean really a chance and make him more comfortable in second and third down. You can't have young, long yard situations with a young quarterback trying to break down defenses, a fast defense, and getting chased around by an athletic defensive line. Second and five, the swing pass, Jalen Ringer. That went nowhere. Jalen Ringer, the ball carrier. Sean Robinson, he looks like he's 
trying to stretch something out. Maybe that last play, that last hook will get each other. Yeah, that last, that first down run that he had, he got landed on right when he hit the ground and sort of winced a little bit. Now he's clutching his right hip. Shiro Alanalua in the backfield alongside Robinson. They go to the option. And Alanalua fumbled it, but out of bounds. Dropped the pitch. Boy, to me, Sean Robinson is just not right. He looks a little banged up. He doesn't look as fluid, as explosive. He needs to get out there on that option with much more speed to make the defender have to make a choice. It's a late pitch. It's behind a lot of Lua, and he can't come up with it. So two very poor drives for this offense. Adam Nunez in the punt it away. Takes a red Raider bounce. Comes forward. Let's get a Dave and Buster's game break. Greg Wolf, what you got, G? Oh, Brian, number three, Miami. They were down 14 to nothing to Virginia with a turnover chain working its magic. Miami recovers a fumbled punt. Malik Rozier finds Dayall Harris 36-yard touchdown. It's all tied up at 14 as Miami looks for a 15th straight win. Brian, Ben. Back to you. Love, love it, man. Next time you got to say, but you turn up the chain. Turn up the chain. <laughs> turn up the chain. <laughs> and Miami comes back. Uh, I'm going to make you one of those. <laughs> you love it that much. I'm going to make you one. It won't be as cool. It might only, it might only cost like three bucks to make, right, but right. yeah, I'll make you one. <laughs> so here comes the Red Raiders now. Eight minutes left until the half. Official discussion here on the field. The ball was possessed by the community at the A-47. Texas Tech 47. At the correct spot. First and ten from their own 47. From the pistol. Should be there. Stockton, left side, breaks the tackle. That's a first down and more. Stockton, down the sideline and brought down at the 20 by Markel Simmons. And they're going to go with pace here. We'll watch the polars coming around to the right side, to the left side. They talked about doing this yesterday in meetings, and they finally, they finally gashed TCU's defense. 33-yard pickup. They swing that one out to QT. Pick up on just a couple. So here we go with second and six from the 17. Well, you see, that's really their M.O. When they have a big play, either running or passing, they want to go tempo right up to the ball and get the next playoff. Chibinick, crossed out of the pocket. Pushed out of bounds. And Ty Summers. See a little razzle-dazzle there from Chibinick, something you don't often see. Who says I'm not mobile? <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. That's right. Hey, I can make some moves. <laughs> Lord, first spin in the pocket, breaking out, picking up just a couple yards, but he's got some feet on him. Marcus Felton, Trey King, check in, split backs. some confusion and Cliff Kingsbury says look let's call the timeout and talk about it and just one second on the play clock Tech have no more timeouts take a look at John Robinson you can see with that heating pad on that right side of his rib area he's gonna try to keep that thing warm and we sit on that first down play a little anti-inflammatory possibly going down the hatch. 
Take a check. Take a look at this play. At the very end of this play, that last hit right from 13, we think, or right down there. Boy, it's really hard to tell yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, you see Bradford. Yeah, you immediately see grabbing right that there. side. Doesn't look like much. Could just be an overextension of a muscle. That's the backup for TCU, Grayson Muelstein. He's a junior out of Decatur, Texas. Here's third and seven for the Red Raiders from the 17 of TCU. Empty set for Shimonek under pressure, and he's sacked. Ty Summers flying out of there and comes up with the sack. This second. And there he is, watch him come off the right side of the defense. They do a nice job of staying stagnant. That just means holding your water, not going up to the line. It's hard for the offense to get a count. They think that you're in coverage. It's a blitz on the snap. And Summers, the junior out of San Antonio, Texas, really one of these one of these guys that can play every position, has played defensive end, knows how to rush and get after the passer, takes a nice angle for that sack. So this will be from 47 yards, Clayton Hatfield. And it is no good. You see, it got up there, and then it went just as you. Boy, that wind is just swirling in the stadium. One second, it's in your face. The next thing you know, it's right behind you. He just did not get much of that ball. Didn't drive the ball like you think he was wanting to. It just sort of hangs up in the air, and you see the wind just kill that thing. Look at it. He, he's he's got to know when, when you play golf here in West Texas in these winds, you got to hit it low. You drive it and hit it low. You can't, you can't put it up there like that. That wind's going to knock it down. You see those winds that, again, at the kick, wind mile per hour is 31. We'll experience gusts of 40 to 50. Kyle Hicks gets that carry, picks up a couple. Well, now you have to, get, you have to be cautious now for TCU, knowing that it looks like Sean Robinson's banged up just a little bit on this right side. Probably not going to want to run the ball too much. So back to the run game with the running backs. And we'll see how that affects him throwing. It's, it's on his right side, which is his right arm throwing side of his body. If it's a muscle issue, that may be an issue of him throwing the ball down the field. Turpin. In motion. Robinson's going to go deep over the middle. It's caught. Jalen Rager. Incomplete now. They say he dropped it. Yeah, we'll take a look at this. Just around saying we're going to test that arm. He does a great job just floating that ball up there, allowing his receiver to run underneath of it. Takes a shot at the end, which is going to be the penalty. 53 of the defense. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be an incomplete. Here's the mm. roughing the passer. Awfully high on the hit in the head and neck area. It's Eli Howard. Sophomore in San Angelo, Texas. He is their team leader in sacks. He knows how to get after it on the outside. If you're Robinson, that's the last thing you need is to hit like that after. You see him smiling, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he minds. Sometimes it's those hits that sort of wake you up in one of these games. Let's bring in our rules expert, Mike Pereira. Mike, let's talk about this uh, official review. Or incomplete. And to me, it's clearly incomplete. And so what they're going to have to do is reverse that to an incomplete pass. And then they'll add on the targeting from the previous spot instead of from where the pass was caught. So watch the ball go through the hands and actually hit the ground. So that's the first element that they'll look at. And then they'll look at the targeting. And remember, quarterback's a defenseless player. So you can't make contact in the head or neck area with your shoulder, helmet, forearm, wrist, those types of actions. So to me, 
Looks like you're probably going to have targeting, although it's pretty close, but called. I think you'll have targeting that will be enforced from the previous spot. So instead of a, uh, a personal foul or late hit, this is more of a targeting that they're looking at is what you're saying, Mike. Yeah, I think so. I didn't hear his announcement that he made, but I do believe that he announced, um, you know, roughing the passer. And I think with targeting, which, you know, to me and Dean and I have always talked about this. If you're calling for if you're calling the roughing roughing the passer for a high hit, then it's almost virtually impossible for it not to be targeting because it's head or neck area. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what they do here. But they've got to look at both elements of this play, which is why it's going to take them a little bit longer. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Well, coming in to today, they had called 228 of those targeting calls. 66 of them have been overturned. After Let's see further review, there is no targeting, but there is roughing the passer by number 53. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. <laughs> So, Mike, uh, let's talk about this. So they yeah. say no targeting but roughing the passer. Yeah, uh, uh, all they really could have said here then was maybe it was late. Um, he didn't make any reference to the pass being incomplete, which is uh, I, I, I'm going to have to take a look to see where they actually enforce this from. But I, I don't know how that can be roughing the passer and not targeting. That uh, really doesn't make any sense. And it looks like they did enforce it from the, uh, from the previous spot. Okay, thank you, Mike. Robinson over the middle. And that one is complete to Turpin. Well, that's a first down. And, you know, if you look at that replay again, you know, we talk about the head and neck area. It's almost like he hit him in the chest, but it was Robinson who head it, it was the It was the violence of the head snap that I thought it was going to confirm a targeting. But if it's not targeting, and I, and I agree with Mike, it, to me it didn't look like timing-wise it was a, a late hit on the quarterback. I mean, maybe a little iffy, but not enough to call it. So uh, I'm not sure really what, <laughs> what happened there. First and ten for the horn fall. Robinson going up top. Throw. And is he in? They're discussing it. It is a catch for a touchdown. And there you hear it. They say touchdown TCU. Well, how about that? On two previous drives, they try to use the legs of Sean Robinson. He comes out now and starts throwing the ball, one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. And we were told by the coaches that he is excellent at throwing the deep ball. And that's going to be under review as well. That yeah. looks like left foot, left toe out of bounds. But terrific placement and a nice adjustment on the ball by Jalen Rager. Took him a while to even determine whether or not it was a touchdown or not. I'm sure they're going to take another look at that one. Well, to me, it's, it's pretty. We saw just one look at it. I think it's pretty obvious that his foot was out of bounds. And they just showed it on the video screen here. Let's get to try to blow this up here. Look at that left toe. Yeah, you can see the left toes there, right there, painting that white. I'm sure that one's coming back. Well, a freshman to freshman connection that just wasn't meant to be. And if we had any questions or doubt about how he was going to be throwing the ball after what looks like some sort of injury to his right hip area, rib area, he's been throwing the ball excellent on this drive with velocity, with accuracy. That one just slightly out of bounds. So they'll bring it back to the original line of scrimmage as we take another look. That left foot right there. Yeah, not a, mat not a matter of possession. Clearly caught the ball. Yeah, he knows it too. I think every everybody saw it. We're just waiting for the official review, the official announcement. Everybody is back at the 35-yard line, ready for the next snap. After further review, the pass was incomplete. It's second down at the 35-yard line. So we go back to second and 10 now from the 35. Well, all of a sudden now, TCU showing some offensive balance. 
running the ball up until this point with the quarterback run game, getting Hicks involved in the run game, and now this drive they've been throwing the ball and opening up this thing down the field. That's Hicks. Robinson going deep again and overthrows Jalen Rager. Oh, they went right back to the bucket on the double move. Rager looks like he's going to run a skinny post. Watch it on the outside, break it to the inside, look at the quarterback, break it back up the field. Uh, and Robinson just puts it a little bit too far, and I wonder how much the wind had a factor in that deep throw. That deep throw. Here we go, third down. Tech. Looked like they were going to bring pressure. They better turn around. Play clock at two seconds. And I think TCU got a timeout. We'll take a quick break as well. Horn Frog looking at third down. Seven to three to score here in the second. Thanks for the ride along, Captain. I've never been in one of these before. Even though Geico is... Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Uh, you got cut off there. What were you saying? Oh, no, no, no. Maybe the Geico's been proudly serving the military for over 75 years? Is that what you wanted to say? Mm-hmm. I have to say, you seem a lot chattier on TV. Mm. Geico, proudly serving the military for over 75 years. You okay back there, buddy? Welcome back to Lubbock. Second quarter, four minutes, 52 seconds left until the half. Third down and 10 for TCU. From the Red Raider 35. Split backs. Kyle Hicks, Kennedy Snell. Snell moves out. It's Robinson, the freshman. Steps up in the pocket, throws. In and out of the hands, Jerison Stewart. Well, that's twice now that they flush Robinson out to his right side, and he goes to throw with a man coming from left to right, and he's just a touch on his timing behind his receivers. Again, we mentioned he's a true freshman coming in this game, has to adjust to the speed of the game, getting chased down by this defensive front, awfully hard to make some of those throws, and he has to learn the hard way how to lead those guys just a little bit. Here's Nunez, he's gonna punt it away. And the Horn Frogs down it at the two yard line. 33 yard punt. Let's find out from our man Mike Hill what's coming up at the half. Hey, coming up on the State Farm Halftime, Texas looks to get bowl eligible on a trip to West Virginia. Plus, fifth-ranked Wisconsin faces its biggest test of the season as number 24 Michigan rolls to Madison. And an upset alert for undefeated Miami. All that at the half right now because, Ben, back to you. Mike, thank you. Mike clean today, and he got the he three is. piece. Well, he's always clean. Ooh, I he see always you, Mike Hill. <laughs> Red Raiders will start from their own two. Look at this. See what they've done here offensively, especially through the air. This is Stockton. Across the five, down at the seven. Well, their, their completion average would look a lot different. And they, the last drive had the completion by Q QT, but this is really indicative of what the offense is. It's just a lot of dink and dunk. It's a lot of horizontal pass game. Shimonek, under pressure. Throws that one away. And that is the one thing that we mentioned. We sort of made light of it earlier on that last drive that he's not known for his ability to get out of the pocket. He had a nice little spin move earlier. It was kind of fun to watch, but if there's been anything that's been different from this offense last year yeah. to this year with Patrick Mahomes last year was his ability to, to feel that pressure, step up into the pocket, which is more important, and make some plays with his feet 
That's something Nick Shimnek just does not do very well. You know, in their opening drive, they went 70 yards, had nearly 20 plays. Since then, just 44 total yards. Shimnek going up top. Looking for Basher. That's thrown out of bounds incomplete. Well, and again, I don't think Basher's the type of guy, he doesn't have that long speed vertically. He's a big, tall receiver, a long strider that doesn't have that top-end speed. So they go with another nine-round route on the outside, and you see Ray Anthony Tejada once again step for step with him. They're going to need to use his big body more in the middle of the field to gain some separation. It's just not working on the outside. Benazola kick things away. Turpin, fair catch. Called it his own for the Red Raiders, 45. So now the Red Raider offense, or I should say the TCU offense, will get a crack at it. And that means their offensive coordinator, Sonny Cumbie, will have to draw up some plays here. And listen, he's got ties here to Texas Tech. He can start the quarterback from 2002 to 2004. For over 5,000 yards, 33 TDs, and a very good friend of Cliff Kingsbury because he succeeded. Cliff Kingsbury here in Texas Tech. Yeah, very good friends. Kingsbury was in his wedding. He was in his wedding. They, they talk all the time. They said they text this week. But he says on game day, they love to go at each other, and they both are very competitive and want to get wins, obviously, for their teams. But great friends on the football field, great friends off the football field. This is Kyle Hicks pounding on that left side. He gets maybe a yard. Dakota Allen and a host of Red Raiders with the stop. Well, now you have to use the clock as your friend. You're winning the field position game. You're already in Texas Tech territory. You have two timeouts. This clock is going to wind down. They're going to take their time a little bit. You don't want to give Tech another opportunity here at the end of the first half. So they have to use their timeouts smartly and their play calling smartly here with Three minutes uh, winding down here in the first half. This is Hicks again. Right side. Breaks free. First down. Finally brought down at the 28. That's Dakota oh, Allen again with the stop. Longest run of the day for Kyle Hicks. 15 well, yards. It's just a simple little stretch play on the right side, and they find a seam and a crease, and Hicks... Is small enough with good vision to get up the field. And I think smartly, whether he intended to or not, stays in bounds to keep that clock running. The read option Hicks. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. You know, one thing that you have to be careful with when you play Texas Tech's defense is they're awfully good at stripping the ball out and creating turnovers. You get a little scrum like that where you're fighting for extra yardage, you really got to hold that ball up to your chest and squeeze that thing because these guys on defense, they're taught you're the second or third guy coming in there. You're going to rake at that football and pull it out. They've been excellent this year at doing that. This is second and eight. Robinson looking for Cole Hunt. Overthrows him. Well, they got their senior tight end on a little out and up, trying to find a mismatch with the linebackers. There's a little bit of separation, but once again, it seems to be going this direction. The balls are sailing a little bit on the quarterbacks. And Robinson's going to have to make an adjustment going this direction to try to pinpoint those balls to his players. Crucial third down here, two minutes until the half. Hicks. And there is nothing there. Eli Howard. I think Roderick Washington as well with the stop. Well, the one thing you just notice is when you watch these guys on tape is how well they run to the football. You know, that's that's something very easy. That's it's an attitude thing. That's a pride thing. Something they worked on all offseason. And from last year to this year, the scheme is relatively the same. They've added a few pieces here and there, but there's just a different attitude with these guys, and you're seeing it here in this first quarter against a very talented TCU team. Horn Frogs will let the clock wind down before they take that timeout. There's David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator. 
third year guy, spent a lot of time in the NFL, came here to the collegiate ranks and you know, he's had to make some adjustments personally with himself, philosophically, just understanding the, the college game to the NFL game, but I'll tell you what, he is he has instilled a passion with these guys, a renewed focus. You know, they have not had a good reputation for defense here at Texas Tech, and you see just the big differences in points, the yards per game, and drastically the run defense. He said, we were going to beef up our guys on the front, an emphasis in the offseason about stopping the run, and those guys have stepped up and done that. You know, when you talk, when you take almost 100 yards off per game in the rush defense, your team has to improve. And, and even offensively, they talked about slowing the tempo down on offense to help their defense out and not get so many snaps. So here's fourth and eight. It looks like this is from 43 out, 43 yards out, goal bunch. They're going to attempt this one. Warren Frogs, of course, won the toss. They defer, so they'll get the football at the beginning of the second half. Trying to get some points on the board. Forty-three. And that is pure. First field goal attempt for him is money. And the Horn Frogs. Now have a seven-point lead with a little over a minute left until the half. Ten threes to score. Welcome back. Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech taking on TCU. Ten to three is our score. What if I told you Tech and TCU were going to play in the defensive battle? <laughs> I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> not at all. I'm not a betting man, but I would put a lot of money on on that not happening. Let's drive this one. Drove it out of bounds, and that's going to be a penalty. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed in the 35-yard line. First down. So we're at Texas Tech. We'll start at the 35. Don't forget, coming up to State Farm at the half. You got Texas and West Virginia, Wisconsin taking on Michigan. That's a big one over on Fox. And Wisconsin needs to win out. You got Miami on upset alert. They were down early to Virginia, but they've since tied that one up. All that and a whole lot more coming up at the half with Mike Hill. Wait, could you imagine if Miami loses? Whoa. <laughs> they stirred everything up. Yeah, you're right. Last week, get in the top four, and come back the next week and possibly lose to Virginia. Whew. No timeouts for the Red Raiders. From their own 35, Stockton, left side. Pick up a five before he's brought down at the 40. <laughs> Well, they're not just going to run this clock out. Looks like their attitude, body language, they want to get this ball down the field. Under a minute. That was too high. Cameron Batson. Well, they had what they wanted. They faked the screen on the outside to get Batson up the field, hit that soft little zone, but he sailed that ball a little bit too high. Jimenek, who was completing 70% of his passes, started off 7 for 7 in this game, but since then has gone 2 for 9 for 6 yards. It's 3rd and 5 here. Under pressure, and he's brought down. Another sack by one of the killer bees. Nick the line of you, oh, you always have to watch out for these guys. On the outside, there's Bosin on the right side. Just beats him with a little bit of a double move inside to out. Good hand work. Nice flow. Good sack. That's the 32nd sack of the season. TCU. Shimanek leads the conference in sacks. Getting sacked, I should say, by quarterbacks. Zolo back in, punt things away. We're good, 
And the first half. And that's the end of the first half. Come to an end. Defensive battle here in Lubbock. Halftime score, 10 to 3. Let's go to LA. And our man, Mike Thrill Hill. Football halftime show, Mike Hill hanging out. Top of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And generally, when TCU and Texas Tech get together, you expect big plays through the air. You know, two years ago when they played here, these two teams threw for over 800 yards. Just last year, they threw for over 450. In the first half, a total of 68 yards through the air. That makes sense, right? I mean, <laughs> the, the numbers are trending downwards <laughs> <laughs> since the last two years. But no, nobody expected this type of game uh, passing the ball. You know, uh, TCU's defense doing such a good job with a short underneath coverage. They're allowing some of those thro throws, but coming up and tackling. So I think in the second half, Texas Tech needs to really go over the top in the middle of the field and test those safeties for TCU. So it, it's been quite the battles you check out the stats here minimal yardage really from from everybody and i think uh texas tech believe it or not with the three-man rush has really been getting after this young quarterback sean robinson and making him throw on the run which is he's not very comfortable doing and a bunch of errant throws throwing behind his receivers coming across the field so a lot of good pressure by this texas tech defense to see if they can keep it up here in the second half those first half stats brought to you by dave and busters Monte Turpin back deep for the Horn Frogs. From his own two is Rager. He brings it out just shy of the 30. So here comes the freshman, Sean Robinson, making his first collegiate start. We talked about the passing yards, just two of eight for 20 yards, but he did run it five times for 73 yards. Well, and one of those was a 41-yard scamper, so a big chunk play on just one particular play. I think in the second half, as long as he's healthy, got a little banged up in the first half, they need to go back to that quarterback run game. That's going to provide the balance that they, that they need and really keep this defense on the heels, and then you can go over the top and set it up with the quarterback run game. Kyle Hicks at 26 yards in that first half. Robinson back to pass, looking right, and he's going up top. And that one's knocked away. He was looking for Jalen Austin. But Octavius Morgan was not having it. You see Morgan going step for step. They go out on the first play of the second half, and they want to go a deep shot on the outside with just a vertical nine route, but you see the speed of Octavius Morgan going step for step, getting the hand in there to break up that play. And that's the danger on first down. Now you put the young quarterback in a second long situation, a little bit more predictable for the defense. Bunch set, the bottom of your screen for the Horn Frogs. And we got someone who jumped on that offensive line. A false start by number 70 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Well, and what a missed opportunity for TC offensively. They had three receivers at the bottom of the formation, and Texas Tech could not get lined up. They only had two guys over there. So here's the three guys, and here's the two defenders. That's not ideal defense. You are outnumbered out there on the outside. So unfortunately, they jumped offsides, not able to take advantage of that missed up on defense. Devontae Turpin is at the bottom of your screen. They think the screen to him. Robinson loses it. Fumble. And it looked like the Horn Frogs came up with it. Eli Howard. And we talked about the takeaways. And that's what Texas Tech is best at. Well, again, it's Howard who made his presence known in the first half. Just stunts from the outside coming in. Beats everybody with speed. And he was really lucky that he did not get ejected here in this game. He was, it looked like a target in the first half, hitting the quarterback a little bit late. They said it was not targeting. He plays in this game still and making his presence known on second down. Third and 25 for the Horn Frogs. Robinson 
over the middle. That's complete. Desmond White. And he fumbled the football. We talk about the takeaways, and the Red Raiders have come up with one. You see the battle for the football. A lot of indication that it's going to be Texas Tech ball. Now nah, it looks like a TCU player came up with it. Check out the look. We talked about this the whole game. They are so good about getting to the ball carrier, and usually it's the second or third guy, but that time it's Dakota Allen, their team leader on defense, emotionally, statistically coming up first man to the football and rakes that ball out. Boy, oh boy, that would have been horrible for TCU to start the second half. That punt takes a horn from bounce and roll. And we got a flag here on the play as they down it at the 17, 60-yard punt. Holding by number 42 of the receiving team. It's a 10-yard penalty in its first down. Well, we talked about Nick Shimanek and the numbers he's put up, but just 48 yards passing in the first half. This is a guy coming in, completing 70% of his passes. Justin Stockton, 75 yards rushing. Well, they said they wanted to establish. We see Cantrell, leading receiver right now, only three catches for 19 yards. TCU's defense, their underneath coverage has been fantastic. You saw the numbers rushing there for Justin Stockton. Backed up against your own end zone a little bit. I expect some running to give your quarterback some room here, but that's the only thing that's really worked here in the first half. From their own eight, Shimanek steps up. He's brought down at the 12. Chris Bradley. That tech offense, just three first half points. The second time that Cliff Kingsbury, that his squad of his, scored three or fewer. Second and five now. Jimenez. That's incomplete. Well, that's the third time now that they have targeted Basher on basically the same route, just an outside go route and none of it is working. Basher, they like him. He's a young receiver, a lot of range, good size, but just does not have the speed vertically to separate, and you're seeing that now on three throws to him. Shimanek is now 0 for 6 on passes that have gone farther than 7 yards. Third and 5, under pressure. He hurls it over the middle of the field. That was dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. Man. My, my goodness. You just, you cannot make that decision. He got very lucky there was not a defender in the area. You never, under any duress, blindly throw across the middle of the field. That's where all the defenders usually collect. And he was lucky that ball hit the turf. You heard a few bu of boo birds here. Well, they had so much momentum after that good defensive stop on the first drive. And, boy, Penazolo shanked that one. So the Horn Frogs got some good field position. We're early in the third quarter. Here in Lubbock, 10 to 3, Gary Patterson and his Horn Frogs with the lead. Gary Patterson. 17th season at TCU, winning his coach. TCU history with those 157 wins. Got the statue of him there in Fort Worth. He has pumped out at least 10 wins in 10 of his last 16 years. Talk about success. 
This is first and ten for the Horned Frogs. Robinson down the middle. That's incomplete. He was looking for Jalen Rager, and Rager was open. He would have got it to him early. He had a step. Well, so far, we see the new scheme. Here in the second half, it's just going to be a lot of deep routes. They're getting very impatient on offense, and they're trying to hit the home run now. Not successful. Changed up their offensive formation. They went bigs on that last play. Two tight ends in the game to see if they get a different look defensively, and still didn't work. Play fake to Hicks. Throws the slant. He's complete. That one to Rager. That's a first down. And they go with the pace now. Robinson looking left this time. And that's out of bounds. He was looking in the area of John DeArce. Well, the coaches told us that John Robinson is a, is a good deep ball thrower, but I, I just wonder if it's the, it's the win, it's the situation in which he's actually getting live reps in a big-time game and a, a hard place to play on an early afternoon, but he is just off right now, and I, I think you go back more to the short, quick rhythm passing game to kind of get him settled down. Devontae Turpin is at the bottom of your screen in the slot. They go the fake to Hicks. Robinson takes off, nearly has it stripped. That's Justice Parker. Well, you can see how well taught this defense is. Every time they have an opportunity to get their, their hand or their arm or something on the football, they are hunting for that ball. That is a great play. Hustle, execution, and they've been getting lucky here for TCU that the ball is bouncing their way whenever that ball is stripped out. Third and 11 for the Horned Frogs. From the Tech 30. The freshman. He's going up top for DRS again. Throws it up, knocked away. Octavius Morgan, Vontae Dorsey. Well, you can see Dorsey, number 15, come in here right at the very end. He was deep center field. There's so much air on that ball, he was able to adjust and go over there and make a play on the ball. Good position by the corner. Morgan on the outside, knowing he has help on the inside. They bracket at the point of attack and knock that ball down. Adam Nunez will come in. He stands at the Tech 45. Pooch kick. That one is a touchback. Can Nick Shivenek and this Tech offense find some big plays through the air? They're down 10 3 here in the third quarter. There she is, the masked rider. Initial mascot of Texas Tech. She rides on that fearless champion. So first and 10 here for the Red Raiders from their own 20. Stockton cuts back up the middle. That's a first down. Well, that's exactly what they need to do. It's just going to be a quick little bounce around to the outside. Good blocking up front. They log the end man on the line of scrimmage. Ennis gains the safety. Shimanek throws that one away. And you see that the tempo which you play with every time there's any sort of big play, they run up to the line of scrimmage, trying to catch the defense on their heels and get another playoff. But I think they need to change the philosophy a little bit, go back to a little bit what they did in the first half and just start running the ball again. Your only success right now is getting Stockton going, whether it's pulling guards up front or plays just like we just saw. He's got 87 yards. He's averaging six. A carry. To 10-33. 10-33. Had to get the game clock together. And it'll be second and 10 now for the Red Raiders.
Batson in motion. Shimonek. Plenty of time under pressure now. Throws it away. You know, Texas Tech will be facing third down. They are 0 for 6 on their last third downs here after. Watch the middle of the field here. They're going to try these double crossing routes, but everything just gets muddied up. Man-to-man -man situation. TCU does a good job of just staying on coverage, and that just throws everything off for Shimek. He has no place to go. That was his primary reads, and you see just after the first or second read, had no place to go, and that pressure gets to him. Here's again, third down and 10. Swing that one out. Look at the job of running there by Justin Stockton. Breaks a tackle, picks up a first down. And here we go, tempo again, big play. Go right back up to the line of scrimmage. Get the play call, try to get this thing off in a hurry. Tech had two first downs on that opening drive. and Convert third down since then had nothing until that play. Stocked in again. Justin Stockton Sammy the Douglas with the tackle. Well, I mentioned that the tempo at which they try to play with, and Rid one is a hawk who, number 31 for TCU, limped off the field, so that's why they couldn't get the playoff. They had to wait. Jimenek, strike, complete, Cantrell. Next flag, though. Number 14, Dylan Cantrell for a Red Raider. First down. Looks like going to be a, maybe a push off by Cantrell. Pass interference by number 14 with the you hit it, partner. 15 yard penalty and replay second down. Sometimes when you see, hey, how do you get so much separation? You see at the top of the screen, right at the break point, the little right hand shove gets that separation. That was a nice call by the official there. Jeff Gladney with the coverage. Trey King has checked in in the backfield now for Texas Tech. Stockton gets a blow. Play fake to King. Shimonek spins out, flags everywhere. He gets out of bounds. You can see Shimonek is becoming frustrated. <laughs> He's getting chased around an awful lot. That's why. Holding by number 76 of the offense. Penalties declined. It's third down. That's Paul Star Wars. This is Shimonek's day. He's been sacked three times. He's been hit a lot. Third and 23. Looked like Boson got back. Jiminek steps up in the pocket, delivers. And it's complete. Well, we say all the time, you get in those 20-yard situations. Not a lot of plays offensively that ask the routes to be past the stick. So you sit back in sort of a softer zone defensively. You're allowing some of those catches to happen right in front of you. Now you just have to come up, rally up, and make the tackle. So a really odd series there for the, uh, the Texas Tech offense. They're driving the ball down the field, sticking their, their first half game plan of running the ball, and then penalty after penalty sends them back. Venezolo, rugby style kicking. out of bounds. TCU with the football when do we come back. 
If you like your pizza loaded with cheese, then have we got a crust for you. Pizza Hut's ultimate cheesy crust pizza. Yep. Well, they're up 56 to nothing right about now. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are. And and Miami right now is tied 28-28 with Virginia. Yeah, in the dogfight. And look out, Michigan up 10-7 on undefeated Wisconsin. It's Kyle Hicks getting that carry. You know, you know the interesting thing is if, say, uh, Miami gets beat, you know these SEC teams are going to have to play each other in the, big, uh, the SEC championship game and things of that nature. Hey, if you're TCU, you went out, you never know. You, 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 you don't, and that's the thing that they need to focus on today because they're still in a, in a dogfight here, but they not only control their own destiny with just getting to the, the Big 12 title game, but if you win that, fumble by the freshman. Red Raiders finally come up with one. Third time they have forced one, but the first time they claim it. You can see their head coach loves that. We talked about how they're the best in the Big 12 at forcing turnovers. Coming into today with 22. And again, just watch how they attack the ball. Every time they go to tackle, especially the quarterbacks who are not known to have great ball security, you've got Justice Parker once again coming up, sticking his right paw in there and knocking out. And like you said, three times now in this second half, they forced the ball out. That is the first one they've actually recovered deep, deep in TCU territory. Let's see if it wakes up the offense now. So it will be first and goal from the six. This is now where you look for number nine, Basher, on the edge as the number one receiver. Use the six bot, the six six frame this time down near the red zone. Split backs, Stockton and Nisby. And Nisby goes nowhere. Ty Summers wraps him up. Where Ty Summers just, he is just a ball of fire every time he plays. Great at the point of attack, the finish. They can move him around, he can blitz off the edge, he can make play calls on defense. He doesn't get enough credit for being a good player. Ball fake, they go up top, pass, knocked away at the last minute. What a play by Jeff Gladney, the sophomore out of the new Boston, Texas. Well, this is the area where you need to use your big men on offense. And Cantrell, he stands at 6'3 as well. Talked about Vasher being 6'6. The ball just not high enough. And Gladly does a nice job of getting his right hand in there and knocking the ball out. Third and goal. Thanks to a turnover by the Red Raider defense. The Red Raider offense trying to cash in. That's the big man you talked about there, T.J. Fasher. They're going to call a timeout with just a second on the play clock. You see, Cliff Thingsbury wants to talk it over with his quarterback. To me, it looked like they're trying to single up Fasher down on the bottom, but he saw a bracket coverage, a safety sort of looming down inside the corner so it was a two-on-one situation for the defense didn't like the matchup we have not called Kiki QT much he's one of their best players on offense I think you can use his speed right now with something on the perimeter if they're gonna lock down these big receivers Red Raiders looking at third and goal The 6'6 red shirt freshman, T.J. Basher, at the bottom of your screen. And QT is the number, number three receiver in the slot. They go with the handoff. It's Stockton, and he's brought down. I think you go for it. At the two. You go for it here? Oh, they're going to bring out the field goal unit. 
hear the crowd's response to that. With as well as your defense is playing to me, they are feeling it right now. They have TCU's offense on their heels. I say you stay aggressive and you go for this thing. But they have elected to bring out their field goal unit and just take the three-point opportunity. Here comes Clayton at field. Who is one for two so far today. Here's Robinson, who fumbled the football. So this is from 20 yards out. Clayton Hatfield, the junior. And he hooked it. And the special team woes continue for Texas Tech. And I go back to what you said. Listen, your defense is playing well. Be aggressive. The defense comes up with the turnover, with the fumble, and the offense could not capitalize. Look at that. Hooked it left. We're still tied. Well, 10-3. That's still our score. Nice code. Ten to three, our score here in the third quarter. Clayton Hatfield has to be the sickest man in Lubbock. Why? Because of this. From 20 yards out, and boy, did he shank it. He's just one for three on the season now. Texas Tech eight for 18 when it comes to field goals. That is the fourth worst in the country. This is Kyle Hicks looking over that right side. Picks up five to six yards. Well, I'll go back to, to my strategy that I was thinking that your defense has played lights out this game. It caused four fumbles. You just get your first fumble recovery deep in their own in their own zone, and you're feeling it. Let your offense go the, go there on for, on fourth down and try to get in there and punch it in and tie this game up. You see the struggles they have in the field goal game. That's a that's a tough angle that should be a gimme kick but he knew how tough of an angle that was, and he really just laid into it and hooked that thing way to the left. Here's the freshman, Robinson, up the middle, cuts back. And again, pushes a man off of him. Pushed out of bounds at the 48. Deshaun Johnson pushed him out of bounds. You can hear the TCU sideline calling for a face mask. And well, two things here. You're going to see Jason Johnson, number seven, come in right there and go for the ball. He's had a few balls knocked out of his hands, and these guys are hunting after that ball. He holds onto it there, but then at the end of the play, he gets up once again and is limping. Holt looks like he's holding that right shoulder and that right arm. 24-yard carry for Robinson. He gives that one to Hicks. And Hicks runs into a red wall. You know, one thing defensively you have to watch out for, they've done such a good job of getting the ball out. Again, four forced fumbles, only one recovered by your own defense. But sometimes now when you're feeling it like that, you can miss tackles because you're so concerned and so concentrated on getting that ball out. So they have to stay disciplined on defense to not just go right for that ball, secure the tackle first, then you can rake the ball. Here's Dave Gibbs, defensive coordinator. For Tech. From the pistol now. This is Hicks, left side, cross midfield. He's in Tech territory. Oh, we got into the flag. Well, it looks like a late hit situation out of bounds. And so, Octavius Morgan. Be the culprit. Hey, to the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct by number five in the defense. Penalty is 15 yards, and it's the first down. That is the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul on number five. Octavius Morgan. Let's take another look. Well. Uh, oh, there it was. There it was at the very end. You saw Turpin's body just go flying 
as they're engaged on the block. So that's a good call. You can't do that after the whistle. That's the first one on him. Another one, and he'll have an early shower. Kennedy Snell is checked into the backfield. And he gets the carry. Cuts back, picks up a few yards. Well, that's the, the, the dynamic that Snell can give you. He's a quicker back, smaller, hard to see. You can see how he can slither out of tackles. And really, that play should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage, but it was just Snell and his ability to, to elude those tacklers to pick up a little something and get more of a second manageable. Sonny Cumby, offense coordinator, TCU. This is second and four. And Snell again. Roderick Washington. With the stop, it's a first down. And we mentioned it earlier, but you're seeing a lot more Snell in this game because Darius Anderson, who's leading this team with eight touchdowns, is out for the season. So they have to go a little bit deeper in the running back room. We get a lot of Kyle Hicks, and then when he needs a blow, Kennedy Snell comes in the game. And this is Hicks in the backfield. Hicks for a couple over that right side. Now the Horn Frogs are just rely on pounding it away. We're just coming upon two minutes left here in the third quarter. Well, they know that their bread and butter is their defense. And with this defense, sometimes all you need is one point. So you're going to use the clock. You're going to be efficient on offense. Try not to give the ball away again and just methodically get the ball down and try to get another score. Robinson, he's going to throw it. He's got snap. Touchdown, Horn Frogs, Jalen Rager. Well, sometimes it takes a little bit of deception. You'll see him right here lined up as a running back close to the line of scrimmage. See him crouch down. He's going to hide away from the defense. He comes around on that swap boot action. And that's an easy throw for Robinson. So nice design and play call to get your speedy wide receiver involved. Bunts punches it through. And the Horn Frogs extend their lead to 14. Thanks to Jalen Rager. 17-3. It's 6 a.m. Down catch of the season. The Horn Frogs are up 17 to three. Less than two minutes left here in the third quarter. Kiki QT from his own end zone. Brought down at the 17. It's time now for the Carl's Jr. and Hardy's game break. Here's Greg Wolf. Brian, thanks. Number three, Miami has had to battle back all day long against Virginia. Kurt Benkert having a sensational afternoon until this happened. Break out the turnover chain again. Jaquan Johnson, 30-yard pick six. Miami has added a field goal for their first lead of the afternoon. They lead at 31-28, end of the third. 17 players, guys, have now worn that turnover chain this season. <laughs> say ahead. it, say it, you go turn ahead, this chain. is your this turnover is your chain, turnover, turnover, turnover chain. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is something. <laughs> First and 10 here for the Red Raiders. Stockton, left side. Nick Orr, wraps him up. Tempo once again. Take a look at TCU's defense. That's incomplete. Thrown behind T.J. Basher. We'll take a look at TCU's defense. Zero points allowed in the second half. Since the third, wow. 
incredible. And even last week, you look at they did Oklahoma. Oklahoma spot them 38 in the first half, and then what they do to Oklahoma in that high-powered offense, shut them down. That pass is complete. Dylan Gentrell, you know, even talking with Gary Patterson, boy, you, he was foaming at the mouth to get another crack at Oklahoma. Wasn't you, you know what? You're not really exaggerating. We, we, brought up, we brought up the possibilities of facing Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game, and, boy, he was like, I want another crack at those guys. And he was as intense as I've ever seen him. So he knew that he let some things. He was There are some things that he called and approached that game defensively that are eating him alive right now. And if he gets another chance at those guys, he's not going to wait to pull out some of those punches. So he needs to get by this game and this tough Texas Tech offense and defense, and uh, he may have a chance. This is second and five. Stockton brought down Sammy Douglas. They'll be looking at a third and three now. They've got trips at the bottom of your screen. That's complete. Cantrell. That will wrap up the third quarter here in Lubbock. 12th ranked TCU with a 14 point lead over the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Fourth quarter when we come back. As we begin the fourth quarter. TCU up 17 to 3. Not a lot of yards through the air by either squad. Brian Custer along with Ben Lieber. This is Justin Stockton and Mark Pereira. Rules are with us as well. Stockton has gone over 100 yards rushing. Fifth career 100-yard game. Third one this season. Will they try to sneak up again? A nine-yard pickup. No tempo to run it again. Big time stop there by Chris Bradley up front. No. Oh, they actually got the first down. Excuse me. First down from midfield. Shimonik looking right. And we got a flag here. He's looking for TJ Basher. That one was tipped, it looks like. Let's see. We'll have to take a look at that. If that ball was tipped. Holding by number 11 of the defense. It's a 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Well, the holding may have happened before the tip ball, if there was a tip ball situation. For Anthony Tejada. Let's see. You see at the top of the oh, screen. Oh, grabbing at the top of the route. He has them pretty good. Got a little arm tug as well. That's a full-scale ma mauling there by <laughs> Tejada. Hey, easy, Changing the play. The defense changing up their play as well. He's looking left. And he's gone to his favorite receiver so far today. That's Cantrell. <laughs> Well, and again, for a guy that is averaging 105 yards, 106 yards per game, we have not seen Kiki QT much getting a whole lot of targets. It's, it's the big guy, Cantrell, especially here in the second half. Six catches, 37 yards for Cantrell, and he's the leading receiver right now. Jimenez is going to keep it. Draw. Big hole. First down. A whole lot more. Drop the football at the end of that run. They say he was down. And there doesn't seem to be any debate about what happened. Texas Tech is going to keep this. Nice design. The play is under further review. Let's see if that hit came in. He was losing the ball as he got hit. We're going to review this play. They marked him down. 
at the 14 of TCU. Well, let's take a look at it here. Oh, oh man, geez. that's close, isn't it? Boy, I think that right knee is, man. Just making contact with the ground. Oh. It's coming, and it's coming out. Oh, my goodness, that's close. That's awfully close. I just don't know if it's definitive. If that ball came out before that right knee touched the ground. Mike Pereira. Our rules expert, what do you think here? Taking a look, this one's close, Mike. You know, anytime you say close, yeah. then that leads me to really, to really say, hey, you gotta stay with the calls on the field. We at one point were looking at the shot here and said, maybe it is, but then we saw that last shot that, boy, the hand's still on the ball when the knee's very close to the ground. You know, I'm in the old school. Whatever's called on the field, you stay with it unless it's absolutely certain, clear and obvious that it's out before. I, I just don't think, in my opinion, there's enough to change this. Clear and obvious, I think, is the key. There, as you put it there, and you're right. I mean, it's like bam, bam. As soon as he got hit, the knee, and then the ball's coming out. Well, and, and like Mike was saying, and there's we have to get the official, but... Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. There's the other portion of it, too, is if it is out, is there a clear recovery? So do you have a shot of the defense with the ball before it goes into a pile? It's not who comes out of the pile. It's who has it going into the pile. That's a good point. Well, you see Ty Summers for TCU coming up with the ball. But I think Mike said it best when it's it's this close the original call was no fumble right had the call been fumble on the field i think you could use the argument that there's not enough information not enough clarity with the ball coming out and the knee touching the ground as well and i think you you see why uh you rarely see tech run the quarterback draw with nick shimmick <laughs> <laughs> not very fleet well, of foot no it's not <laughs> uh, and, the, and then he takes a hard lick from the, the backside and loses the football. So all sorts of bad stuff going on with the quarterback run game. But I like the call because you're, you're not looking for him in the quarterback right. run game, especially the design draw that they ran getting the center up the field as a lead blocker. So I like the call. It's just you can obviously see why they don't feel that comfortable calling this sort of play a lot in the game. And it was Sammy Douglas who made that hit on Shimadek. And they're looking at this for a long time, so. Well, it's a critical part in the game, a critical part of the field. They certainly want to get this call right, in fairness to both sides. Still reviewing here. This one. Mike, they've taken a while here to review this one. What do you think of some of the things they're discussing? Well, you know, to me, if they're taking this long, they're going to rule it as a fumble, but they're trying to determine if there's a clear recovery, as I talked about earlier, because you have to have a view of, of, of possession of the ball by the defense before it goes into the pile, because, hey, it may change three times if it's in the pile, um, but if you don't have a clear recovery, even if you rule it as a fumble, then the play stands as being down. So um, I, I think that's the one thing they're trying to find is the shot that maybe could show a clear recovery. I probably wouldn't reverse it anyways um, because it's so close to fumble. But again, I, I don't see anything clear here to say you could reverse it and give the ball to the defense. But I could be over 2 on this one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they have now taken well over three minutes. Referee Castleberry After has the After further ball. review, the ball was fumbled by the runner and recovered by the defense on the 14-yard line, first down. Mike, you bet 50%, partner. I mean, come on now. Well, you know, at least, hey, at least 50% is pretty good for me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, again, when it takes 
not, not my when it takes this long to make the decision and you got the elements of is it a fumble and is there a clear recovery. I'm the old school guy. Let's stay with what's called on the field, um, which again, I, I don't think the old, the terminology that's used in the college rule book is beyond a shadow of a doubt. I just don't think there's really anything beyond the shadow of a doubt that either it was a fumble or that there was a clear recovery by the defense. But replay is judgment. It's just judgment in one person's eyes versus another. Well, you're right on it. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. So TCU gets their first turnover. They retain possession. They get possession. Kyle Hicks gets that carry. He runs for five, and that was crucial for the Red Raiders. He's driving down there. Fourth quarter. You could get a score here all of a sudden. You never know. It's a whole new ball game, but, man, that was a backbreaker. That was a backbreaker, and now you have an injury to compound things here for the defense for Texas Tech. Desmond Smith, the corner, walking off the field under his own power, but you said it. I mean, you talk about a critical point in the game where you're down 14 points and you put together a nice drive, and what's the most devastating thing that can happen? Turnover. Mm -hmm. TCU, now 11 takeaways in the last five games. Second and four, Hicks. Keeps the legs turning, picks up about three. You know, that's the one thing I, I, I don't love about the rule in, in both leagues, the, in college and the NFL, is and that sort of play right there, that scrum, once it's stopped and forward progress is stopped, blow the whistle. But as a defensive player, I always hated that they, the offense always got sort of a second chance to get some linemen to push the pile even further. I mean, we're not, we're not playing rugby here. You know, <laughs> we're, you know, you know once you, once you do your job, once the, once the ball carriers stop going forward, I think you should blow the whistle and not allow any sort of offense or ball here to have a second or third opportunity. Spoken like a true former I'm linebacker. I'm like Pereira. I'm, I'm old school, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm old school, and I, I'm defensive-minded. <laughs> Here's the first down carry for Hicks. And those Horn Frogs are just going to pound the rock now. Let that clock run. Oh well, yeah, I think that there's some teams, or a lot of teams around the country that they wouldn't feel that comfortable with a 14-point lead, knowing what Texas Tech can do on offense. But TCU's defense is special. They're just different. They're built differently. They play a little different than everybody else. All they do is pitch shutouts in the second half. They're doing that once again in this game. So a 14-point lead is is a comfortable lead for this team. And they are built to grind up front, to run the football. They think they have better and stronger athletes in the trenches. And as, as valiant of an effort that Texas Tech has done defensively, they need to somehow strip another ball and give the ball back to their offense. They've played great. This is a high-powered offense for TCU. They've played very well. But they got to do something extra special here in the last few minutes here of the fourth quarter. With that five-yard run, Kyle Hicks has now gone over 2,000 in his career. Up top, that is incomplete. John DeArce. Octavius Morgan with the step for step. Well, Octavius Morgan has been, he's had a, a real nice game throughout. Anytime they want to throw deep, he has been there step for step. And you can tell that this young quarterback has what it takes to get the ball down the field. Now he just needs a lot more game reps to figure out the speed of all his receivers. You, you hear all the time that quarterbacks and receivers need to be on the same page. And it's one thing to be on the same page in practice. It's another to do it on game day. Olana Lua gets the pitch, and Olana Lua is off to the races. Down the sideline and pushed out at the 40. Well, talk about inflating your passing numbers on the shovel pass. <laughs> you know, a little bit of a wrinkle. It looks like a speed option, but you have Alana Lua running up inside of the quarterback. That is a shovel pass. That's going to go down as passing yards for Sean Smith. 
but really just a nice run by Alana Lua. First and ten now for the Horn Frogs from the Tech 40. Here comes Hicks. Well, once again, that's that's the sort of play I'm talking about. Where, you know, it was a good two seconds where the, the ball carrier was stopped, and yet there's no whistle ble being blown. So I don't like it because I don't like, you tell, I don't like it. <laughs> But what do you want these guys to do? <laughs> Bill Snyder is smiling get... watching this game. Like, That's my boy. Well, they're, they're, you know, they're... people get hurt in those situations. You know, he had big 300 pounders running full speed to try to push the pile, and guys standing around the pile get get sort of plucked off. Safety issue. Here's Hicks. The fake. Robinson, left side to the 20. Cuts back 15. Brought down at the 11. Jay Sean Johnson tripped up the freshman. Well, finally, Tech is going to bring a blitz. They're getting tired of getting gashed in the run game. And when you blitz off the edge, sometimes you have to have contain. You have to be contain-minded. And they just lose contain on that on that particular play. Sean Robinson does a good job keeping his eyes up, recognizing that Bonte Dorsey was losing contain and picks up a nice first down. That's 19 yards. He's now got 84 yards rushing. This time they go to Hicks. He stopped at the 10. And you can sort of feel how TCU's offensive line is just now imposing their will on the defense. The defense is getting a little tired. They're getting a little run down. They've made some plays for their offense, but the offense could not capitalize. And now you see a big rotation of, of red jerseys coming off the field to give their guys a break. Those guys have been getting beat down all game long and really stepped up, but this is a big physical offensive front for TCU. I think you hit on it. Tired and probably frustrated because they did their job tonight. Absolutely. You know, going into this and even talking with the coaches, their whole thought was, you know, we have confidence in our offense to put some points on the board. We just don't want to strike too early. But we don't want to leave our defense out there for lengths of time. But hey, the defense has come out there. They forced them turn. They got a turnover. Had the ball loose a couple of times. Couldn't get it. But they've done their job. It's been the offense that's come up empty here today for the Red Raiders. Listen, you, you hold it. I don't care what offense it is, especially in the Big 12, the 17 points, you're doing your job on right. defense. Right. That man down, and that looks like Octavius Morgan. He's had himself a good day today. So hard to tell exactly what he's looking at. 17 to three is the score here in the fourth quarter. MS1 College Football is sponsored by 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar. It is the bar. All right, take a look. This is Octavius Morgan. I like the strategy. Hey, man, my shoe's untied. Hey, hey ref, my shoe's untied. I, I can't help you out. All right, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? All right. Maybe let's go down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Somebody has to do it when, you're, when your defense needs you to do it. You got to do what you got to do, brother. Yes. Stop that clock. Third and five. This is from the eight. You can see 20 seconds on that play clock. And he's just going to let this let it thing rain. wind down. Absolutely. You Ooh, snap okay. it with one second left. Take a deep breath, grab a snack. Easy, 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 easy. All right. Five now on the play clock. They'll let it go down to one. They call the timeout. And they'll discuss it. Third and five for the Horn Frogs when we come back. Sunday on Fox at Raider 8. Freshman, 
Sean Robinson. They run it. For 84 yards, 10 carries. They go to the read option to Hicks, and oh, he is picked up and driven back. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I know you want to do it. Yeah, Justice Feeling Parker. Feeling good about yourself. He's got two forced fumbles today, a big stop on third down. Just so glad he did not he did not dump him right there. There's Parker on the right side. Watch him fill that gap. When he sees his key, which is off that inside offensive lineman, once he blocks down, that's his trigger to go. He has no other responsibilities in the pass game but just to go downhill. Nice play in setting up a field goal here for TC. This could get dicey. Here's Cole Bunts. He knocks it through from 25 yards out. And the Horn Frogs now up 17. 20 to 3 is your score. Seven minutes left in the game. So Dave here is taking the family up to the lake for the weekend. Well, it's been uh it's been sort of a sloppy game so far, hasn't it? You know, we never thought it'd be uh 20 to 3 would be the score. We knew TCU's defense was awfully good, but quite impressive now. Another second half shutout going so far for their defense, and really in totality holding this high powered offense just three points. QT across the 20, cuts back, swings, spins, and loses another tackle before he's dragged down and at the 40. Time now for the expectation-shattering drive of the game. It is sponsored by Buick. Well, it got started here by the fumble by Sean Robinson. They've caused four. They finally get one. It's the big shank on the attempted field goal to get some points. They opted not to go for it on fourth down. And then TCU comes right back with an easy touchdown and a long drive. And they get another three points on their last possession as now they're up 20 to three in desperation mode now for Texas Tech. And Chivinick, under seven minutes left in the game, swings this one out to Stockton. Coming up and making the stick is in his game. You know, that's a part of this offense that I thought we were going to see more of, of. Not just Stockton running the ball, but Stockton in the passing game. You know, he, is, he has the ability to flare out, to run those swing passes, to run up the middle of the field, a lot of angle routes. They have not used that in this game. Maybe this would be a good time when they need a big play. Chivinick. Cantrell overshoots him. Well, they've tested this defense on the outside. Not a lot of success. They've ran the ball pretty well on the inside. I still think that at some point in time, this is the time to do it, to test this defense in the middle of the field. Really stress out their deep safeties and see if you can get something over the top. Here's third and 10. Shimanek pulls it down. Still looking, rolls right. And coming back to the football, what a play by Antoine Wesley. And here we go, big play, get lined up again. Looking to just come back to the football and the concentration. Here's Shimanek. Again, steps up in the pocket. He takes off. Picks up three. Boy, he was really close there on that scramble, too, of losing that football again. Lost one earlier, and Ross Blacklock just about got that ball out, so he's got to be a lot more careful when he's scrambling around trying to extend plays. This is second and seven. That one is knocked away. Good defensive play. Banigou, get another one of those killer bees up front. He's trying to swing that one out to Stockton. 
That's the first time we, we've really mentioned Banigou. He has really come on for this defensive front. So athletic off the edge. He gets a little impatient in pass coverage when they ask him to drop back in pass coverage. But him along with Matt Bosin on the outside, they really provide a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Third down. Stopped it. That's a first down. Brought down at the 10. All right, here we go again. You see the coaches telling him, get lined up. Let's get another playoff. Cantra has it taken away by Jeff Gladney. Gladney down the sideline, and Jeff Gladney's going to go all the way. A pick six for the Horn Frogs. Well, this play is nothing but Gladney. Gladney, the ball's placed on the outside, forced just a little bit, but he just took the ball away. You'll see here, placement on the outside, swipes down at it, and it mm. just lands right in his hip pocket. But watch the end of this play. I still don't understand why players feel like they need to do this. He's going to drop the ball at the one-yard line, trying to look sweet. Mm. He does go back and get it. But why, oh why do players feel like they need to do that? You're right. Gladney has seven tackles on the night. Now that pick six. How about those TCU replacements on defense? Douglas has seven tackles, a forced fumble. Evans, six tackles. So they've come up big here today. Extra point is good. Horn Frogs now up 27 to 3. Jivinik. Looking for Cantrell, but Gladney was not having it. With the pick six, and Cliff Kingsbury is not happy. They're down 27-3. Frogs up 27-3 thanks to the 93-yard pick six by that young man, Gladney. <laughs> you see him reenact it right there on the sidelines with Ennis Gaines. <laughs> The guy just took that thing. <laughs> QT will down it as we get a game break. Here's Greg Wolf. All right, Brian, thanks. Number three, Miami, finally with a little breathing room late against Virginia. Malik Rozier finds a seam up the middle, dives in for the eight-yard score. Travis Homer's added another score. Hurricanes lead 44-28, late fourth quarter. Brian, Ben, back to you. All right, thank you. We got a new quarterback for the Red Raiders. McLean Carter, the sophomore, checks in. You see what he's done so far in his career. Athletic guy, he's a senior in high school, 16-0. You can tell he's shaped his head since then. He'll hand it off. Marcus Felton with the carry. Take a look at the interception again. You'll see Gladney just literally take the ball away. Good defensive swipe of just trying to knock the ball down. Didn't really intend to like grab it, but the ball just fell right into his hip. He takes it, picks it up and runs it in for a touchdown, his first pick six, and that's putting this game away. Another handoff to Felton. Carter, as you saw, has thrown the ball six times this season. He's appeared in two games. It's East Washington and Kansas. He's completed three passes against East Washington, completed three passes against Kansas. First and 10 for the Red Raiders from their own 36. South 
Hall slings that one in. It's complete. Cantrell. Here in Horn Frog territory. Texas Tech needs another victory. They want to be bowl eligible. Haven't done that in two seasons here in Lubbock. Felton dies forward. He's close to another first down. And for TCU, rack up another victory. Put them at nine and two. One more victory against Baylor next weekend, and they'll find themselves in that Big 12 championship game. This is Nisby. Big man, running hard. Let's take a look at the uh, standings in the Big 12 right now. Just as you mentioned, Brian, just TCU controlling their own destiny. They win. They're going to win here today. They win next week. And if Oklahoma continues to win as well, they will face off once again. And I tell you what, we talked about this a little while ago about what Gary Patterson looked like in his demeanor when we asked about the possibility of facing OU again in that championship game. And, and you said he was frothing at the mouth. Yeah, and it, it was. was not really an exaggeration. He is pumped up. He is excited. He wants definitely another crack at those guys because he feels like he left some things out on the table that uh, defensively that he should have done. He has a better game plan already for these guys. So <laughs> you want to you want to talk about uh, quite a matchup and some storylines going that game. That's going to be fun. So TCU will take on Baylor Friday. You can see her here on FS1. This is first and ten for Carter and company. The sophomore is sacked. And for the Red Raiders, they'll wrap up their season against Texas. That game Friday, you can see it on Fox. Well, and they're going to have to find in this next week of prep somebody else on the outside to make some plays. They ran the ball somewhat effectively, but just not enough big plays on the outside. Of course, they'll wrap it up against the Longhorns. And Texas right now up 28-14 at West Virginia. Never saw that coming, man. Just went final. That's a good win for Herman and company. This is Felton. So we come upon two minutes now left in this one. Yeah, it's a little interesting to me that I, I realize the game's out of hand and you've got your, your backups in the game. And, you know, why wouldn't you just try to throw the ball a little bit more, see what they can do, and see if you can get, uh, you know, test your, your backup quarterback because there may be a time, you know, next game where he's got to come in. Fourth and eight. That one knocked away. Michael Downey Jr. Knocked it away. We talked about how they came in, TCU came in this game shorthanded, not the starting quarterback, running back, safety, linebackers, but Sean Robinson, the freshman, threw for 84 yards, ran for 84. Kyle Hicks ran for 81s. And Gladney, the 93-yard pick six. Well, and you know, if I had to assess, you know, how the young quarterback played, I would say it was a win in the fact that you got a win and you sort of got the experience as a starting quarterback. He did not look very good throwing on the yeah. run. He's got to learn to throw with touch. He's got to, he's got to throw with some touch, I, and I know that the win may, maybe played a factor in that, but I don't think it played as much of a factor. You just sort of watched him and the way he threw the ball. He just sailed a lot of things I think mechanically. You could tell he was a little antsy. I thought he looked good running the ball. I think it, he can be a little bit more decisive sometimes on some of the zone read stuff. But it is a learning process. 
He did get the win here in a tough environment, an early kick, which is always tough for a lot of players. So it is a successful win for him and a successful outing, but he's got to show a lot more, especially if you're going to get back into that Big 12 championship. And you, you should you expect to have Kenny Hill back next weekend. Well, and those things are always tricky. You know, you, you don't know what's what's going to happen with him. You know, with with his injury, you don't know what's going to happen with him if he's going to be ready. And he definitely provides you some more stability at quarterback. And I think the offense runs much smoother with him in there. Well. Saddle up, TCU, because you're taking the saddle trophy back home. It's been a long time coming. Those two started playing for that trophy in 1961, did it for 10 straight years. Until 1970, until all of a sudden the trophy came up missing. They've brought it back, built the new one here, and they call this the West, West Texas Championship, and it's the Horn Frogs. Take it, saddle it up, ride it back to Fort Worth. You gotta think somebody's gonna try to get on that, right? <laughs> you know exactly. Right? <laughs> you know. Like I, I would. Maybe Coach Patterson after getting a win like this. Tough environment. I don't know. I don't see that happening. He still hasn't cracked a smile either. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> he still has not cracked a smile. <laughs> Everyone else is though. The freshman smiling. Congratulations. True freshman getting his victory in his first collegiate start. You know, I have to say that this defense for Texas Tech was much improved. There's a strange of pleasantries there. Gary Patterson, one more victory for him against Baylor. He'll be playing in the Big 12 championship game. Texas Tech, more offensive struggles. See, the last time they were shut out in the second half was quite a while ago. But they will need a victory next weekend against Texas. Final score here from Lubbock, 27-3 TCU for Texas Tech. Coming up after this short break, we're going to send you out to Los Angeles to Mike Thrill Hill for more college.